I have a new video for you guys because Dan Schneider is back and we're not happy about it. And neither are a bunch of Hollywood regulars who claim that Dan is a vile man. He's definitely not getting a warm welcome back, but it doesn't look like he plans to back down anytime soon. So let's get into it. Before we start this video, here is a quick message from our sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a virtual private network that you can use to place your phone or your laptop anywhere in the world. This is super helpful when traveling or if you're living in an internet restricted country. When using Surfshark, you can escape those restrictions or securely access censored content like blocked streaming sites or you can bypass geo restrictions. Also, Surfshark is the only privacy product that allows you to connect all of your devices to. So try it out and use my code SLOAN for 83% off and an additional three months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk trying it out for yourself. Check out my link in the description below and enjoy the video. So Dan Schneider is a 55 year old former Nickelodeon producer, director and writer. He created some of your favorite childhood shows, but he got the boot from Nickelodeon in 2018 after years and years of allegations. During a three year hiatus, we thought that Dan was never coming back, but it turns out he went and lost about like 100 pounds, which congrats, Dan. And now he's back in Hollywood, which I'm like, wait, hold up. Wait, what? I was thinking he was maybe going to work on himself and like lay low for like the rest of his life but now he currently has shows that are piloting with networks and we're going to find out this month if, if they're getting picked up and if he's going to be back in Hollywood and today we're going to be talking about a bunch of reactions to that New York Times article that introduced Dan back into the industry if you guys have not seen my video about that article definitely go check it out it is so biased towards Dan Schneider but today we're going to talk about reactions from people who have been close to Dan and what they have to say about him returning back. Before we get into this video, I have to give a shout out to my good friend Obscure Nickelodeon. Definitely go follow them. They are linked below. They did a bunch of research for this show. They do a lot of research about Nickelodeon and Hollywood in general, so go and follow them. Today we're actually following one of their latest threads that talk about all of these people speaking out, and I was shook to hear what some of these people had to say. Before before we get into some of the recent commentary about Dan, I want to take it back to 2018 when he first was let go by Nickelodeon and people like Liz Feldman spoke out against him. She is a comedian, a producer, a writer, an actress, and she worked very closely with Dan on the first season of All That. When Dan was let go by the network, she tweeted out, I worked for Schneider 25 years ago. I can confirm inappropriate behavior was happening even then. Hashtag me too. I'm sure Liz would be thrilled to hear that Dan is back in Hollywood. I'm just kidding. That is all sarcasm. And actually, while we're on the topic of all that, another writer from all that spoke out recently about Dan's article where he announced his new shows and he's trying to defend his past behavior. Her name is Kayla Alpert. She was credited as an additional writer on all that during its first season, the same season as Liz. She has also spoken out and she wrote in a tweet, one of the worst people I've ever had the displeasure of working with. Sad that the journalist interviewed zero writers for this article. Hmm. More depressing, the continued whitewashing by apathetic and ambitious executives who knew better. And actually, I'm a little like interested in this whole writer thing because it looks like there's a theme here. A lot of the writers are speaking out and I wonder if there's like some loop poll in their NDA or if they ever really had an NDA in general. Kayla also shared a story time on her Twitter about Dan and she said, first five minutes of my first day of my first writing job ever. Dan, my boss, turns to me and says, women aren't funny. Name one funny woman. I want to say the woman you paid to F you last night. Oh my gosh. Instead, I mumbled Lucille Ball. 
I can totally see that Dan is the type of man who, like, would probably talk down to his female, like, writers, his colleagues, um, it, which is just not cool ever. Christy Stratton is actually a very successful TV producer who worked with Dan on his first show, The Amanda Show, and she had a horrible time with him and was actually fired. She was actually replying to a tweet on the Twitter, and she wrote, Vindictive doesn't even begin to cover it. I would be more specific with examples of his cruelty, but I'm still afraid of him, even though it's been 20 years. Like, oh my gosh, like hearing that, like, I'm scared of him too. Oh my gosh, like, hide your children. Hide your like, that's how I feel. Like, I need to hide everything. Hide my dog. Lock the door. Extra lock it. She also told a horror story about him, something that I could not even like conceptualize in my mind. I had to read it over and over again. But she said, Dan, this is a guy who weeks after firing me and having my agent and manager fire me, tried with another writer friend to sabotage my selling transactions on eBay. I was broke, y'all, by posing as new buyers and then not paying. I put nothing past him. So like, like, no wonder she's scared of him because when she was literally broke and blacklisted from Hollywood, she tried to sell some stuff on eBay. Dan wouldn't even let her do that because he would go onto her eBay when he found out and then like buy things but not actually pay for them and just screwed over her listings. The manipulation and scare tactics are so real here and that's why I'm worried that other writers are going to be taken advantage of in the future. Now this is when the video is going to get interesting because I want to introduce you guys to someone named Tracy Brown. You can actually find Tracy here on YouTube. She has her own YouTube channel. I'll try to remember to link it below. I probably will, but go ahead and check her out if you would like to. She's actually the mother of an actor named Brian Hearn, and he was on all that at one point, and she's had interactions with Dan. Here are some of the projects that her son Brian has worked on in the past. As you guys can see, between the years of 2000 and 2000, to, he was featured on all that. You can also see him wearing the green up here in the corner. He's got a headband that says Brian on it. And here is a cast promo photo where you guys can see again, there's Brian in the orange plaid fit. So this kid was a full-blown child star and Tracy Brown was his like momager situation. She was there on set in the green room and actually the whole plan with Brian was to replace like Nick Cannon. She explained this in one of her streams in the past because I've watched a couple of her streams before and it's interesting because they wanted to kind of replace Nick Cannon because he was kind of growing up off of the show and they thought that Brian would be the perfect fit but Tracy Brown was not about to give in into the disgusting industry and these creepazoids trying to take advantage of these children. Actually, here is a recent picture of Brian. I took it from his Instagram, and it looks like he actually got out of the acting industry back in the day after the whole Nickelodeon situation. But let's go ahead and talk about this tea that his mother was spilling all over her channel. In a recent live stream titled Lynn Spears, Tracy went in, and she actually talked a lot about Jamie Lynn and some of the disgusting things that she believes she went through. Definitely go check out that stream if you want to hear about those things, but there are two little clips I want to play for you guys today. I can't 100% prove what she's saying here, but she was actually there on set of Zoe 101, and she's claiming in this little bit that Lynn Spears, Jamie Lynn's mother, Britney Spears' mother, actually created Zoe 101 and wrote the show, and that Dan stole the show after, you know, Lynn just gave it to him, and he credited himself as the creator, even though Lynn created the whole, like, pilot, I guess? Like, Listen to what she has to say. You know that show, Zoe 101? I read that. I looked into that because Lynn wrote Zoe 101. Wrote it herself. She's actually very talented. And I said to her, do not hand this over. It's yours. Keep it. Be in a power position. Be producer. Be executive producer. But this is your baby. You don't give it up. What's the next thing you think she did? Gave it up to Dan Schneider. Yep. Dan Schneider lied and said he, he created it or produced it or wrote it or whatever lies Jan Dan Schneider likes to tell a lot. 
She said a lot, lies a lot, and supposedly, allegedly, Lynn Spears decided to talk to Larry Rudolph and actually arranged for Zoe 101 to be passed off to Dan Schneider along with her daughter and pretty much her innocence. This clip is really disturbing, so I'm going to give you guys a trigger warning right now because we've talked about Drake Bell before on my channel and we've actually talked about this situation specifically in a previous video because we believe that allegedly Drake was actually like harmed on on the set of the Amanda show by a producer named Brian Peck who literally went to jail for this. But listen to what Tracy Brown had to say about it because she pretty much confirms that yes, Drake was taken advantage of by this guy and to make everything all better, the network gave him his own show with Drake and Josh. That Nickelodeon studio was riddled with Oh, and by the way, with that, I don't have to say allegedly. They all got arrested throughout the years, including the most recent Drake. Drake, who was <laughs> went and it and said his 15 year old. That's recent. He's, this isn't allegedly. Is it allegedly? They will just say allegedly if it helps everyone. He had a settlement with Nickelodeon, and that's why Drake had his own show. Allegedly, allegedly. Again, I can't really confirm what Tracy is saying there, but it kind of sounds like what we've heard from the past. But I'm sure that Dan hates Tracy because there was actually another live stream she made. And you guys may remember if you watched my like my big Dan Schneider video that Dan back in the day, he would allegedly with his friend like Brian Peck and people like that, he would go and have these pool parties just for kids where he would like recruit talent and things like that. And it was a no adult only kids pool parties at these like mansions in the Hollywood Hills, which is obviously really like, why are you doing this with children? Like that doesn't sound right. Tracy has actually spoken out saying that Dan Schneider and his people wanted her and her son to separate from one another so that he could go to one of the pool parties Dan hosted. Tracy openly said on her stream that that was against the contract. Tracy was a good mom and she told them no and then afterwards Brian was fired from all that and they both left Hollywood. She said that Nickelodeon Studios were rigged with gross men and women I'm sure too and that they all got arrested over the years which is pretty much what we heard a little bit earlier in that snippet. Before we watch the clip together, like I said, the story goes that Tracy pretty much said no to Dan Schneider and he just did not like her because he wanted her son to go to this party. But Tracy says that she lives with no regrets and she's happy that her son got fired so that he wasn't involved in this mess that other child stars are a part of. I'm not really sure what happened at this point, but then Dan Schneider took over all that. And Dan Schneider did not like me for whatever reason. Maybe I was too loud. <laughs> so then they decided they didn't want my son on the show anymore and sent us back to New York. And basically that's where everything stopped. So sometimes guys, you have to trust God in the process. Right, if anybody knows what I mean when they bring up Dan Schneider and he decided to get rid of me, you know, Dan Schneider, you did me a favor. You did my son a favor. Because then there are all these rumors that I don't even want to get into. And God is good. Because there are many times on that set where they're like, hey, we want to invite Brian to a party. And I'm like, hey, just Brian? And they go, yes. And I'm like, no. And they don't like moms that take control of their child. But I had heard things. So guess what? You don't need to like me. And they were like, well, bye-bye. And I was like, let's go. I was not going to do anything for the money. Like, y'all need to understand, I'm that woman. I'm that mom. I'm not going to do anything that might compromise my son, not even for the income. We went home. Gladly.
And you guys can tell that she is confident with her story. So I kind of believe her. I mean, I believe that stream itself was from February 2019. Maybe it's 2020. I think it's 2019, though. So she's been talking about this for a minute. And honestly, Lynn Spears and probably Drake Bell's mom and other people could probably learn a lesson from Tracy Brown. But let's go ahead and switch gears because there's one last person I want to talk to you guys about. So this is Arthur Gladstein. He was a Nickelodeon writer and he worked with Dan for six years. As you guys can see, he wrote on a bunch of Dan's shows. Everything from Drake and Josh to Victoria's to iCarly. And recently in that New York Times article where he, you know, Dan announces that he's coming back, they actually interviewed this guy and he had some things to talk about when it comes to Dan. We've talked about this little bit before on my channel in that video where we talk about his return, but pretty much he says he's very grateful to Dan for taking a chance on him as a young writer and that he learned a lot from Dan. Much of his experience with him was a blast, but at the end, he says that Dan was unreasonably demanding. He was controlling, belittling, and vindictive. He also said that Dan has a willful disregard for boundaries or workplace appropriateness, which I feel like that sentence has a lot of stories in there right there. I mean, like demanding, controlling, belittling, vindictive, like tell me a story for each one of them and like boundaries and stuff. Like we've heard this before, but it's like everyone's just too scared to really spit it out and say what has been going on. So those are some of the people who have been speaking out against Dan Schneider. And I'm sure there'll be more, especially as he announces his new show and it starts coming out and like, oh my gosh, I just can't believe it's still a thing. Thank you so much to my friend of Scared Nickelodeon. Definitely go follow their Twitter account. They've got amazing research. And if you're someone who wants to come forward and speak about something, they're an anonymous source who I personally trust. Like if you are going to go and you need to expose an influencer or anything, go hit them up. They're a great person to just trust. And I mean, you know, I don't have a lot of like friends out here in the industry, in the YouTube world. So this is one person that I solely trust that you guys can go to. But anyways, let's go ahead and open a PO box package item. Again, if you have any video ideas for me, here's my email right here. But let's go ahead and open this. It looks like it's from someone named Tiffany Soap. And it looks like they're located actually on the East Coast, close to me. So let's go ahead and see what they sent me. Hopefully there's a letter inside. It feels very dense, so I'm really excited if it's so. Because I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, perfect. There's a letter right on top, which we, we love. And oh, oh my gosh. Oh, it already smells so good. Stop, stop, Tiffany. Okay, let's see what she sent. Oh, I love the, like, just the card. So sleek. I'm already like just so impressed. Okay. Oh, dear Sloan, I've been watching your channel for a while now, and I want to say thank you for bringing attention to. Oh, it's kind of cursive y. I'm sorry, guys. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly of the world. We need more voices like yours. I know some of the topics are heavy and hard, so I wanted to send you some soap to help wash away the icky feels down the drain. Oh my gosh, I love this. Bring some good smelling self care vibes to the room. I make. Oh, I don't know what that word says. You make it out of, oh, you make the soap yourself. Oh, awesome. Um, your viewers and, oh, your viewers and fans can get 15% off with code Sloan, S-L-O-A-N, at checkout, which everything will be listed below, guys. Oh, go ahead and treat yourself with some soap. I'm not even spilling the soap yet. Um, thank you for sharing and supporting small businesses. Always. I'm always here for the small businesses. I always will be. Um, you're the best. Uh, Tiffany Ripper, Ripper Soap. Tiffany Ripper Soap. I didn't want to say like the full name because I didn't know that was her last name, but that's actually her Instagram and every, everything. It's TiffanyRipperSoap.com, which will be listed below. It sounds so legit. And let's go ahead and check it out. Oh my gosh, she hooked it up. So let's go ahead and open this one first. Um, hopefully it's not like, I don't know if I'm gonna like spill anything anywhere. <gasps> Ooh, uh, packaging. <gasps> Look at this wave at the top. Oh my gosh, this one smells so good. Like my boyfriend's gonna want this one immediately. It's definitely more of a masculine, like just earthy. I think it's called Birchwood something. Owl or oil, but I can't read cursive. Oh, it smells so good, Tiffany. And I love the packaging, like extremely chic. And then finally, she sent me a little bit of a bigger package. So maybe there's two in here. Hold up. Oh, <gasps> oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. When you open it up, the colors are just like popping. Okay, hold up. This looks so, <gasps> oh, 
Oh my gosh, pure honey. I could read this one. <gasps> and the top has literally by like, oh my gosh, the craft is amazing here. This is awesome. Actually, it says it's located in DC. That's really close. Like very close. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Oh, and it feels so good already. Like I can't wait to go take a shower. And then this one right here, which is called grapefruit and basil. Okay, actually my boyfriend's gonna want this one. Oh, no, I'm keeping this one for myself. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, guys. Thank you so much, Tiffany. I will list everything below. Go and support a small business and I will see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys.